Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 66. So today I'm going to be showing you a relatively simple bracelet, but there are a couple techniques in it that you can find really useful for other designs and using it other ways. Um, you can also add extra strands to the bracelet and really kind of jazz it up in whatever way you feel like you want to creatively express yourself. I love the warm weather and one of the great things about the warm weather is you can really show off your wrists and bracelets and I really love to make and wear bracelets. This bracelet is a really cool one that you can kind of stack up and layer with other bracelets which is something I love to do. Um, so I think it's a great summertime bracelet and it is beautiful on its own as well. So let's just get started. So these are the tools and materials you'll need for this project. So you'll need one bead and I still have these in a strand because sometimes bead strands are so beautiful I hate to cut them apart. It's almost It almost breaks my heart to cut them apart sometimes. Um, but I will to make jewelry of course. But I have these really pretty beads. I got these um, at Bead Fest. Um, Oh, a couple months ago when I was there, I posted some photos on my Facebook page if you're interested in seeing more about my experience. So my Facebook page is facebook.com slash emerging creatively tutorials and then if you just kind of scroll through you'll find the Philly Bead Fest pictures if you're interested. Okay, so you need just one bead. And then you'll need some silk ribbon in a coordinating color to match the focal bead you're going to be using. So I have this beautiful turquoise silk ribbon um, from Happy Mango Beads. And I'm actually going to use, um, this is fairy ribbon, and it kind of just like rolls up. And it's cute, and then it, and then this is just the regular ribbon, and I like to use them together. So that, and then you'll need 22 gauge wire and 20 gauge wire. Um, for both of those, half hard, round, any metal of your choice. I'm using silver plated. You'll need a clasp. So I'm using this cool uh, toggle clasp. I believe this is also from Happy Mango Beads. And then you'll need a few jump rings. I'm using 7mm jump rings. And then you will need some scissors, chain nose pliers, bent nose pliers, round nose pliers, and wire cutters. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a wire wrapped bead link and that means I need to cut my my bead strand here. <laughs> so um, this is cool how they actually have it knotted in between each bead so it's still a very pretty bead strand. <laughs> okay so I have my bead and then we're going to use some 20 gauge wire. And so we're going to start by cutting about six inches of wire. And then we're going to grab our round nose pliers. I like to make a mark on my round nose pliers with a sharpie. And that's so that all of my wire wrap loops are uniform throughout a project. So that mark will come off with time. Um, and you can, you know, make different marks for different projects, um, but you just use a sharpie mark on there. And now when you grab the wire in your round nose pliers, you just line up the wire vertically with that mark and um, horizontally. <laughs> it's about an inch and a half from the top of the wire. And so we have the long part down here. And now we're just gonna make a loop so you just wrap toward you and around your pliers. 
to form a loop. And now we grab our chain nose pliers and hold that loop in um, the chain nose pliers. And um, you'll see this loop is not straight above the long part of the wire, which we want it to be. So this is how I like to straighten the loop. I wrap around one time with that small side that we were using previously. And then as I do that, I pull out the longer end straight. So now that loop is centered on top of the wire. Now let's switch hands. And I'm grabbing my bent nose pliers. And I'm going to wrap around two more times, keeping those wraps close together. Nice and tight. Nice and neat. And then you just trim off the excess wire, making a flush cut with your wire cutters. With most normal wire cutters, um, there'll be two sides, kind of the back side is kind of flat, the front side is kind of concave to make a flush cut, which is a nice straight cut. You use the back of the wire cutters toward what you're cutting. The other side would make a pinch cut, which we do not want. And then you grab your chain nose pliers and just make sure that end is not poking out. So I just like to do a little motion kind of around. And then you can just run your finger over it to make sure it's not sticking out. Okay, so now we grab our bead and slide that onto the wire. And we repeat the same thing. This time, you're going to hold the wire about a quarter of an inch above the bead, just a little bit of space, and do the same thing. So wrap the wire around the round nose pliers, and you line up with the mark when you did that. Hold the loop and chain nose pliers and wrap around once and pull the bead out straight. So now the loop is straight above the bead and then wrap around two more times. Pulling everything nice and tight, keeping everything nice and neat. So again, we'll turn off the excess wire, making a flush cut and then use our chain nose pliers to make sure that end is not poking out and kind of make sure everything is straight. If your loops ever don't quite look like a circle when you're done with them, you can just insert your round nose pliers as far as they'll go and it will make a circle again. I put this aside for a second and I'm, we're going to open up a jump ring. I'm going to show you quickly how to do that in case you don't already know how to. So first you need to find the little opening in your jump ring and if you can't see it very well you can usually run your finger over the jump ring until you find it. And then you're going to take your bent nose pliers and your chain nose pliers and center that opening in between them. And then with one hand, go forward and one back. You do not want to do an open motion. And you open up the jump ring. And then when you close it, you just do the opposite, which I'm going to show you in a second. But actually, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to add this one end of the toggle clasp to this uh, bead so that we can see how long that part is going to be, which will all make sense in a second. So take your open jump ring and place one loop from your bead and then one end of your clasp onto the jump ring and then close the jump ring. So to close it, you just do the opposite of opening it, but just go past the point of closing a few times. That will just harden up the jump ring and then you'll hear it or feel it click into place. Okay, so now that we have this, we can measure and see how long we need to make the, the ribbon part of our bracelet. So, so the rest of the bracelet is going to be made up of this ribbon, and so we need to know how long to make the ribbon part. So what you can do is decide how long you want your bracelet to be. And one way to do this is to just take something, and since we have this ribbon right here, 
that I have now put in a knot. It's okay because one of my superpowers is getting knots out. We can just use this as a guide and you'll need your ruler. So just kind of measure around your wrist how loose you'd like your bracelet to be. I like mine pretty loose. And make sure you are accounting, um, doing it from end to end. Okay, sorry. Here we go. So, for me it's about 7 inches. It's a little bit more than 7 inches. And I'm actually going to make it I'm just going to make this part seven inches. There will be a little more room because we'll have some jump, you know, a jump ring going from here and then um, a jump ring the other side too. I'm not super uh, technical or specific about those kinds of little details. I know if I'm around the right range, my bracelet will fit me just fine. Um, but you can get more detailed if you like. Um, so, I know that in total I want to make the bracelet about 7 inches. So now I'm just going to measure this part here and see how long it is. And it's 2.5 inches. So I just need to subtract 2.5 from 7. And then that's how long I will need to make this portion of my bracelet. So I'm going to start by not actually cutting this uh, ribbon at all. We're just going to start on the one side and then when we do the other side we'll cut it and that way we don't have to worry about making a mistake right away. So I have a 7 millimeter jump ring here and I'm going to put the ribbon through it. So I'm using both fairy ribbon and just regular silk ribbon. I'm using both at the same time. Alright, so I'm just threading that through. And now I'm just going to fold this over. Now we did this technique in the last um, Emerging Creatively Tutorials television, or ECTTV. And so I'm going to show you again. It's the same technique, but we're using a different material this time. Alright, so I have a uh, 22 gauge wire, and so I'm going to just cut off a piece of it about 20 inches long, which may be too much, but I like to have too much rather than not enough. So we have this folded over, and now we're just going to start wrapping around. So I'm just going to hold about an inch with my thumb here on my left hand and start wrapping around with my other hand. And this just sort of helps you stabilize everything. And I just want to wrap the wire right next to each other. And you want to start down a little bit further than I did. And just wrapping around several times. Enough so this is secure. And then I'm going to trim off the excess making a flush cut and then make sure this end is not poking out and honestly you only need about 5 inches rather than 20 um, that's okay I'm going to use this wire on the other side as well and so then with this other end, I'm just going to wrap that around a few times and then trim off the excess making a flush cut and then I'm going to use my chain nose pliers just to make sure that end is not poking out. Alright, so now you just want to cut um, your other end and just leave some extra room so I fold it over about an inch of the ribbon and so um, add an extra inch for that and um, do exactly what you did on this side on the other side. Okay so I have both sides done now 
And as you're doing the second side, when you're folding it, um, pulling it through the jump ring and folding it over, you can just kind of refer back to your ruler and double check it before you start wire wrapping. Okay, so we have this. Now we can start putting everything together, really. Um, first, I'm going to trim off a little bit of the excess here. I kind of like to have it a little bit kind of out a little bit, but I'm just going to trim off a little bit of the excess. Okay, so I have opened up two more jump rings, um, just using the same technique I showed you earlier, and we're just going to put everything together. So on one side of this uh, bead, the wire wrapped bead link, I am going to hook um, one end of the ribbon portion and um, I'm just using a seven millimeter jump ring and then we're just going to close the jump ring and then on the other end I'm going to hook a jump ring through the end jump ring and the add the bar part of the toggle clasp and close it and that is your really simple bracelet. So if you try on your bracelet and you find out that you have made it too short, all you have to do is add some jump rings. So you could add jump rings at any point where there are jump rings in, in every point if you want. And to kind of cover that up if you want, you could add some bead dangles to each side, something like that. Um, I do have an ECT TV episode where I show you how to make a bead dangle. I will link over to the bead dangle um, episode of ECT TV so that if that does happen and you want to add a couple bead dangles, you can. You could add a bead dangle um, to the ribbon part, that sort of thing. And I just wanted to remind you that when you sign up for my newsletter, and I will put the link below this video, you get future episodes of ECT TV in PDF form. So you get a step-by-step -step photo tutorial in PDF so you can easily download it and save it. Any episodes after you sign up, you will get right in your inbox as well as a link to the video and you'll know when the fresh one is up. So if you're watching this video kind of when I publish it or sometime in the near future, I have an e-course coming up called Inspired e-course. It is an art journaling and jewelry making e-course. You get creativity activities and art journal prompts. And then from there, we pull out the inspiration from the pages we make to make jewelry. And I show you how to do that. It's a four week class. Um, it's called Inspired eCourse. It starts July 25th, um, and it's kind of far off if you're watching this video right now, but it's closer than you think. Time is just ticking away. <laughs> so you can come over to the page and read all the juicy details about the class and sign up to get in. It's called Inspired eCourse. The link will be below this video. So I will see you in a couple of weeks for a brand new tutorial. Have a wonderful couple of weeks. Be creative and inspired.